Good morning and welcome. My name is Frank Sochi. I'm the product support specialist for the vacuum concentrator Speedback line from Thermo Fisher Scientific. This morning, we're gonna go over the installation of our new SRF 110 Speedvac P1 kit. This is gonna incorporate three components, the SRF 110 concentrator, the RVT 450 minus 50 degree cold trap, and a standard VLP 120 oil pump. This is a kit. Everything you need to install this is going to come in the kit, including a tubing package. The tubing package is going to include two lengths of vacuum line, one four foot, one eight foot, a bag of fittings, straight elbows, T-connectors, along with clamps, a tubing cutter, a secondary lid for your cold trap, and a manual bleeder valve. Now, you're not going to use all of this tubing when you do your installation, but we give you more than enough to install it. Even if you wanted to put the oil pump under the bench at some point, there's more than enough tubing to make that connection. Now, what you see in front of you is the ideal setup for this kit. We want to at least have between four to six inches of airflow around each product. Once we have it set up like this, our first goal is to set up the oil pump. And we're going to start basically by taking the oil pump and we're going to put it up on its oil box. Now, I just want to point out that there is an oil fill. The oil comes pre-charged within the pump. You want to make sure the oil is between the minimum and maximum line, and you should not have to put any oil into it. All right, so what we're going to do now is we want to put this quick disconnect drain kit onto the vacuum pump. And we're going to start by first removing this plug. A little tough, it might be to get off, so using a pair of wrenches, We're going to unscrew it, and we're going to just put it to the side. Next, with the drain kit, you're going to get a O-ring. That O-ring has to go onto the bottom of this fitting. It just slides right over and push it down to the bottom. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to screw this metal fitting into the hole. And since this is an oil connection, you want to make sure that it's as tight as possible. So using wrenches or a crescent wrench, you're going to want to get in here and you're going to want to tighten it. That's it. Now we want to hook in this quick disconnect fitting into the top of the pump. So holding this upright, we're going to want to bring our pump back down. And the reason we want to hold it upright is because you're going to notice it starts to fill up with oil. And if you put it down, the oil is going to want to leak out. We don't want it to happen. So just hold it up in this hand. You're going to notice on the top of the pump, there are two caps that say oil. We want to take off the first cap. You want to take the O-ring from the bottom of the cap off. We want to place that on the bottom of the quick disconnect. Now, you can do two things. You can either put this right on, or I like to pull it off, take it on, and screw it down. And you can do this hand tight. Take this fitting, snap it back into place. What this now can be used for is when you need to do an oil change on your pump, Snap it out, goes down to a can, drain out the oil, snap it back in when you're done, open up the second oil cap, fill it with oil till it gets to the minimum or maximum line. In this case, it's at the maximum line. The next portion was we want to remove the shipping plug out of the exhaust filter area. And basically, you're just going to unscrew that. You're going to probably need a pair of pliers for this when you do that. Place that to the side. We want to take the mist filter. We're going to want to screw that into place. And again, this is going to be hand tight. You don't need to make it tighter than that. Now, 
We do give you an extra filter. This is called an MF190. And the reason we give you an extra filter is, is as oil mist rises within the pump, it can contaminate the filter and come out. That can happen over six weeks, six months, six years, depending on usage. In order to replace this, it's very simple. You want to unscrew the top of the cap. And again, you might need pliers to do this. And once you get the threaded screw out, leave it in the cap. Here's your filter, it slides out. Take your new filter and you slide it in. And just put the cap back on and screw it down in place. And this is just something you might have to do periodically as maintenance. Now that we've got our vacuum pump set up, we wanna to move to the cold trap. That's our next phase we wanna get set up. So what you're going to do is you're gonna remove the flask cap you're gonna remove the white insulation ring. Then you're gonna remove the glass flask. Place that there. Now inside you're going to see that there's some foam, which is the packaging for the glass. We wanna remove that and this gets thrown away. Next we wanna pour in 750 ml of cryocool. What this is is a cryogenic fluid that helps for heat transfer within the cold trap. So as when the vapor comes in to the flask, it can condense out and freeze at the bottom. There's a fill line in the can that you can see a ring around it. You wanna be up to that or slightly below it, which is also gonna be about 750 mLs. So you would take it, open up the cap, and you pour in your 750 mLs. You put the cap back on, and you're roughly gonna have about a half a liter left, which is more than enough. Put your flask in. Your flask will actually be floating in the cryocool. You're gonna take your insulation ring. Notice that the ring has a circle cut out in it. That is a perfect fit for the flask cap. So it sits this way, not this way. You're gonna take the insulation ring. You're gonna push it down into place. So it's level, you're gonna take your flask cap, you're gonna stick it back on the flask. Using two thumbs, you're gonna press on the front and press on the back. And now the flask cap is seated properly, and that's it. Now we're gonna connect up the vacuum lines from the SRF 110 to the coal trap. And the way we're gonna do this basically is really no set measurements. It's gonna depend on how far the product is, space-wise. So what we're gonna do is take the vacuum lines, which is about eight feet, and we're gonna connect it up to the back of this fitting right here. Now you have two ways of doing this. You need a tight fitting, so tight connection. So you're either gonna use vacuum grease to allow you to get the line on, or what I prefer to do is a technique that I've learned and used for many years, and that is a little bit of cryocool in the cap and you dip your finger into the cryocool and you put the cryocool on to the fitting. Put your clamp on, of course, and you're gonna find that it pushes in very easily, but it also makes a very tight fitting and it makes a really good vacuum connection. Now you're gonna to wanna to take your 5 16 nut driver and you want to clamp it tight. Once that's done, your next connection is going to be to the flask cap. We're going to go to the closest hole to the concentrator. So we're going to take our line and we're roughly going to eyeball it. Now, we don't need it to be this far out and we don't need it to be that tight. You want it to be a comfortable position. So you just eyeball it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the supplied tubing cutter and we're gonna cut the vacuum line and install the next fitting. And we're going to cut the tubing. And now we want to install 
one of the fittings here. And since the line is straight in, we're gonna use a straight fitting. Again, we're gonna take our cryo cool, dip our finger in it, go around the, the fitting. It pushes right in very easily, makes a nice tight fit, almost impossible to get out. With vacuum grease, this would pull right out. This is a much better way of doing it. Now I'm gonna take the other end of the fitting and I'm just gonna push it into the back of the cap until it seats. You might have to wiggle it a little bit, but that's it. If you notice, it gets right into the shoulder in the back. That's how deep you wanna go. Now that we've made this connection and we're done, we need to make the next connection from the flask cap to the vacuum pump. Now you'll notice on the vacuum pump that there's this little red shipping plug. Just take that off and throw it away. We kind of want to eyeball this now and see how this is going to work. And as you can see, coming out of the back straight, coming over to the pump, this is now vertical. So it's kind of difficult to take this and squeeze it and do this to it. We don't want to do that. We're going to create a series of right angles and make an L angle out of this. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our back in the line. We're going to take our cryo cool. We're going to go again around the fitting. We're going to push it into place. And now we're going to come to the back of the flask cap and we're going to push this fitting into the back of the flask cap. Okay, now we want to eyeball this up to the center of the fitting that's vertical. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to cut it right there. Next, we're going to take a, another right angle fitting. A little bit of cryo cool again on the end. And we're going to push that into place until we've created a right angle. L. Now what we want to do is we want to take a small piece of vacuum line and we're going to want to clamp this into place, pushing it all the way down, as far down as you can get it to go, and then clamping it tight. Next, what we want to do is, is we want to well, roughly eyeball and measure it where we have to cut the vacuum line. So it's going to be right about at this point, about maybe about two inches up. I'm going to cut that. A little bit of cryo cool again on the end of the fitting. And we're going to push down. Now we want to finish our vacuum line installation by putting in this manual bleeder valve. And the reason we need a manual bleeder valve is, even though the SRF-110 has an automatic bleeder valve in it to bring air back into the its chamber, it has no way of vacating the lines that'll still have vacuum in it. So if you need to get the flask out and remove the flask cap, it almost would be impossible because it's under a vacuum. So you wanna be able to bleed the system completely. And part of doing that is, is you're gonna to have to shut your vacuum pump off first and then bleed the system. Now you'll be able to remove the cap, get your flask out, empty out any liquid that's in there, any solvents, or put a fresh flask in. So let's just put this in and it's fairly simple to do that. We're just gonna come here, cut the line right in the center. We're gonna push the BV-130 and again, a little bit of cryocool helps on the fittings. Push that in on that end. Cryocool, push it in on this end. And of course, if it looks like it's not laying correctly, you can move the vacuum pump a little bit so it lays flat. Now, your installation is complete. Now that we've finished the installation of all the vacuum lines, we now can finally plug in the equipment and turn it on. So there really is no order to plugging in the equipment. So the mains line goes in the back on the SRF-110 right here. We then move to the RVT-450 and we're going to plug that in. That mains line plug-in is right on the side of the unit.
The mains plug-in line on the VLP is on the right side of the box as well. Once you plug these all into the outlet, sequence of operation to turn them on is the pump comes on first, the switch is here. You turn on the cold trap, the main switch is here. Please note that once you start your RVT450, it takes about 45 minutes for it to cool down to its operating temperature of minus 50 C. So you have to wait at least 45 minutes before you actually start a run within the SRF 110. Now we come over to the SRF 110. We hit the main switch on that, and that now turns on. Once we power it up, we can open up the lid. Inside we'll find the rotor basket. This is a 132 place basket for 1.5 and 2 ml tubes. You can see the arrangement of the tubes within the basket. When you wanna put the rotor back in, it's very simple. You just drop it down and it finds its center every time. Even if you just would put it in with off center, it automatically will find its center. So there's no rotor hold down knob. You don't have to worry about screwing anything down. This is a very nice little feature on it. Once we're ready, your rotor is now loaded with your samples. You can again close your lid and you can come over and you can press start run. One of the things I wanna talk about right now is in case of a power failure, how do I get my samples out of my chamber? Well, that's fairly easy. We'll provide you with this little emergency release tool. You're gonna to place it in this hole and you'll feel a little resistance. You're gonna push that metal plate that's inside and you can hear it. And once you push it in, you can lift the lid. And that's it, you can get your samples out and you can see the lid doesn't close, now it'll lock, but if you push down on it, it'll lock. And that's it, and now you've got your samples out.